This week on Game Pro News, we look at all the big things to come out of Gamescom 2011, all of the awards, a new look at Battlefield 3, a first look at Dota 2, some major news from Sony, touching on all three of the company's latest platforms. Double Fine is set to release Trenched in Europe under a new name, not challenges Bethesda to a deathmatch over their impending lawsuit, Mojang Specifications reveals the company's first third-party distribution deal, and Suda51 combines cheerleaders, horror, and just a little bit of gore in his latest zombie slasher. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen. This week was Gamescom held in Cologne, Germany. So much news came out of those few days that we're only able to scrape the surface and give you the best bits. To start off with, no games convention is complete without a bunch of best of awards. These ones were organised by the event itself and really, there's no big surprises here. Blizzard got best PC game for Diablo 3 just a couple of days before stating that the developer is very, very serious about exploring a Diablo-related concept for consoles. Sesame Street Once Upon a Monster was labelled best family game with the judges enchanted by Cookie Monster's dancing. Sony also picked up a couple of prizes with best hardware or accessories awarded to the PlayStation Vita and the new Uncharted Golden Abyss a winner when it came to best mobile game. That said, though, Electronic Arts came away the big winner, scooping four Best in Show awards, including the coveted Best of Gamescom gong. The European football vote counted as Best Console Game went to FIFA 12. Best Online Game was Star Wars The Old Republic, which will be launched in limited numbers to avoid flooding and crashing the game's servers. Best Browser Game is The Sims Social, which has just gone live on Facebook with more than 4.8 million monthly average users. And of course, the Best of Gamescom award was handed to Battlefield 3, which just lapped up all of the available limelight. The Electronic Arts press conference revealed a sneaky peek at the game's co-op mode, and we got this first look at 64-person PC multiplayer, which was available on the show floor. We also got a look at a pre-release fact sheet which reveals the game features 9 multiplayer maps, 6 gameplay modes, close to 100 ribbons and medals, and a whole bunch of customizable dog tags. Battlefield 3 is released around the world starting October 25th. Just a little while after that, the world will get its collective pause on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. PC gamers can now relax after learning an important lesson from the release of Modern Warfare 2. Activision has revealed the game will indeed feature battle dedicated PC servers. Battlefield 3 wasn't the only eagerly anticipated trailer we got to watch either. After a handful of screenshots were leaked last weekend, Valve took a deep breath and released a first look video for Dota 2, using narrative from the game's shopkeeper. Often I am asked, what does a hero truly need? <laughs> Much depends upon the hero. Would you be swift? Then for you I have speed beyond measure. to 
the might to overpower any foe. and I will unlock your inner cunning! This all came out in the lead up to the International, which was the inaugural Dota 2 Championships held at Gamescom. 16 of the world's best Dota teams are competing in a double elimination playoff, and the winner, announced on August 21st, will be awarded $1 million courtesy of Valve. The game's still on track for a release sometime later this year, with beta signups happening right now on Dota2.com. Sony had a big week at Gamescom 2, announcing a new model for the PSP, a whole bunch more information on the PlayStation Vita, and a significant price drop for the PS3. Now cheaper than ever, the PlayStation 3 will set you back less than 250 bucks in the United States, a bit less than 350 in Australia, 479 in New Zealand, and just 249 euro in Europe. You could even put the change in your pocket towards the brand new PSP E1000, which is pretty similar to the original PSP 1000 launched back in 2004, but it features a slightly different aesthetic and the ability to play the entire PSP catalogue of games. That catalogue's about to expand too, with the introduction of a whole bunch of bargain basement PSP Essentials titles, so you'll be able to stock up for cheap. But while the PS3 and the PSP are full of good news, all eyes were on the brand new Vita, which is getting ever closer to release. Gamescom revealed the console will include social connectivity features like Facebook and Twitter, as well as a couple of specifically designed apps to let you see if any nearby friends are playing games, or to chat online with your mates even when you're not playing the same game. Third-party publishers also announced their Vita launch plans. Expect to see FIFA, Bioshock, Virtual Tennis and Call of Duty popping up on the handheld, alongside Ubisoft favourites including Assassin's Creed, Rayman Origins, Luminous, Asphalt, da Dungeon Hunter Alliance and Michael Jackson The Experience. Another game headed to Vita is Silent Hill Book of Memories, and even though we've only seen the slightest of hints about the game, it's already polarising the community. Konami has revealed that the upcoming game will be a top-down multiplayer experience. Even though it promises to stay true to the staples of the franchise, yes, Pyramid Head will be making an appearance, nobody seems quite sure how things will translate to the handheld or to multiple players. Horror fans are also disappointed with the freshly announced Silent Hill HD collection, which includes a revoiced version of Silent Hill 2. While this may have been an intentional design feature, rumours have already started that it has something to do with Konami not paying royalties to the original actors. Moving away from Gamescom a little trenched, we'll finally see a European release via Xbox Live Arcade next month, but you might have a little trouble finding it. Rather than looking for Double Fine's latest under that title, you'll want to check for Iron Brigade. It seems that pesky trademark held by Portuguese board game creators last, uh, last month stuck fast, forcing Double Fine and Microsoft to rethink their branding. And that's not the only trademark infringement case that's been in gaming news. Bethesda Softworks sent the lawyers round to Minecraft creator Notch recently, with the Skyrim developer accusing him of encroaching upon their property with the upcoming game Scrolls. After taking a little time off to get married and such, Notch has thrown down the gaming gauntlet, challenging Bethesda to a game of Quake 3. Three of the best warriors from Mojang specifications versus three of the best from Bethesda. If Mojang wins, Notch suggests that Bethesda drops the lawsuit. If Bethesda wins, Mojang will rename Scrolls to something the other company is fine with. When Notch made this ultimatum, it doesn't seem that he'd really thought it through. On the surface, it's a worthy challenge, until you realise that Bethesda is owned by ZeniMax Media, who also happen to own id Software, the creators of Quake. 
It's very possible that three of the best from Xenomax just may be the people who wrote the game. It's no surprise then that Notch apparently regrets his decision, but he still hasn't retracted the offer. Speaking of Notch and Mojang, the Swedish company has just announced it will be taking on distribution duties for its first third-party game, Cobalt, from Oxide Game Studio. This isn't Oxide's first game, following on from Harvest, Massive Encounter, Strategist and Dawn of Daria, but this one's destined for big things. The developer describes Cobalt as an action game of running, jumping, rolling, shooting, throwing, dancing, hacking, rolling, flying, sliding, climbing, looting, deflecting, racing, pinata passing, scoring, and even more rolling. The game's due out later this year for PC, with a version for Mac and Linux following soon after. And finally, when you hear that Suda51 is involved in the game, you know it's going to be something a little unusual. The brains behind Killer7, No More Heroes and the recent Shadows of the Damned has made a career out of taking things to extremes. James Gunn has taken a similar path, preferring film to video games, creating Slither, Dawn of the Dead and Tromeo and Juliet. Take those two, combine them with a healthy dose of zombies, cheerleaders and self-defense, and you get Lollipop Chainsaw due out in 2012 for both Xbox 360 and PS3. We got our first look at the trailer this week. On that note, till next week, I'm Jessica Citizen and this is GamePro News.